Hello, I'm Mr. Trongone. I'm your new superintendent for Pemberton Township Schools. Uh, I began July 1st, but actually I started visiting schools in April 16th when I was approved. When I started gathering data, that's the first point of business for a superintendent. Obviously, I was talking to the Board of Education. I was talking to parents, talking to teachers and principals. But a wise man once told me, if you really want to know what goes on in schools, and if we're really doing our job as, as I'm really doing my job, talk to the kids, talk to the students, because they're the, they're the ones that actually walk through the curriculum and the, all the experiences in school, after school, transportation, lunches, all those types of things that make for a good experience in school. So the question is simply this, uh, because again, I know about Pemberton schools. I, I taught nearby at one time. I grew up in South Jersey my whole life but I don't know what it's like to live, work, play, and learn in Pemberton. So simply put, what makes sense and then what doesn't make sense in your years that you've been learning in Pemberton? So to me, what made sense when I went to Pemberton would probably have to be the educational programs. You know, we have a lot of educational programs that a lot of schools don't have. Um, we have the nursing program, engineering, um, Fame Academy, we even have like a lot of elective classes that a lot of other schools don't have the opportunity to have, like uh, horticulture, body shop, um, wood shop, bakery. You know, these things really help out the kids that go to school to find out what they want to do in their future careers. So I think it's a great thing to have that I think Pemberton did a great job doing, was probably great. education. And, uh, and if we have responses, say your name and your grade level, so you're? I'm Natalie. Um, I just graduated high school. Oh, congratulations. And where are, you, where are you going, Natalie? I'm going to go to Rutgers University. Okay, what's your major going to be? I'm actually undecided yet. Yeah, I have a lot of different options that I want to do. I want to try out before I really oh, decide what I want to do. Congratulations and good luck in your Thank future you. endeavors. Anybody else with making sense? Yes, Christine? I'll build off of what Natalie said. The one thing that I stand out from the group among the table is that I have not <laughs> attended a Pemberton schools for 10, 12 years. I've only been here four. I transferred to high school here rather than continuing private school simply because I wanted to see what public school had to offer. And I was, I was blown away at what this district has. I came from a small school. Our graduated class was like 26 kids. So to walk in and to see a computer in every room was mind blowing. But not only that, like Natalie said, everything we have to offer, the classes, the, the even the summer programs. The, I talked to kids at other schools who were like, wow, they bus you in over the summer and you get to do all of that without paying extra fees and stuff like that like we really have a lot of potential to give these kids what they need what they want that's the thing you know you have parents who push this is what you need this is what is necessary but the kids want it and we're so fortunate to have all this put together i just wish more people knew about it so we could take advantage of that's it that's a good question I i'm going to go off of that now how do we get people to know how great things are here it's a good question. Yes. <laughs> it's a good question. That's probably one of the things that um, is probably kind of, I don't want to say bad, but it's probably really hard because a lot of kids don't know what, like, what's out there. And it's unfortunate because it's really good for the kids to, to do it. And they don't know what we have. Anything else as far as making sense? Um, I'm Gabby. I'm going to be a senior this year. Um, one thing that really made sense to me was the block scheduling. Here, um, I remember when they started it when I was in eighth grade, and at first it didn't really make a whole lot of sense, and it was actually really confusing. But um, now uh, I really like the block scheduling. Um, I think it really helps because you get to, you know, take a lot of different classes, you know, all in one year. I, I really enjoy it because I like the change in the middle of the year. It's really good. It's a fresh, like a fresh start. You know, you get to start over in the middle of the year rather than, you know, waiting till the end. Okay, you're going to be a senior, so. What, what's your vision of where you're going to be going, Gabby? Because you, you've three years now in high school. Where you where you want to be going? Knowing you, knowing what you know now. Well, I actually after school I do a lot of I play a lot of sports. So after school, when I'm not actually you know playing in a sport or something, I help out our athletic trainer, and she actually teaches me you know a lot of the stuff that she knows, and she's very knowledgeable. So I really wanted to push forward being like an athletic trainer and continuing that from what I learned from Ms. Boker. That's, that's good news. And then what about coursework for that? Like being an athletic trainer, are there things that are helping you reach your, you know, reach your potential in that particular 
uh, avenue? Well, there's obviously there's the after you know after her school you can go in Boca and you can you know ride around with her and go to all the sports and you know see what's going on. But um, there's also classes like you know like anatomy and physiology and all that kind of stuff that actually will help me further you know what I want to do. Okay, good. Thank you, Gabby. How about any of the middle school students? I'm Joanna. I'm going to be in seventh grade this year. And one of the things that made sense to me were like the after school programs and the things that we have over the summer. Because when you're in the school year and you're and you have other opportunities, you kind of get to the summer and you're just kind of like, well, what do I do now? Because now all I have to do is summer work and I don't have all of the cool activities that I have during the school year. And now we have the summer program, which really like adds on to that. So it's what did you cool. participate in the summer? Um, I do theater, so I participated in the summer theater program. I saw that. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> and how many weeks was that? It was, it, the, well, the program is four weeks. I, I, I look at that as you, you, they were so talented. Is it, what are you looking as far as even during the school year or for future activities in, in the theater? Um, you want to pursue that? Yeah, I definitely well, want to pursue that. I'm not trying to theater. project on you, but I was wondering um, if you like it that much that you want to go further with it. Yeah, I so. really like theater. It's really cool, and I can't wait for like all the musicals to come because I'll be doing the both high school and the musical this year. So I really like theater, and I think it's great that we have a summer and a school year program for it. Okay, I'll, I'm going to put another question out there. I'm the superintendent. And, uh, you know, when the new, new, new guy gets in here, th this is what I'd like to see. You know, we have to phrase it where we're positive, so I don't want to beat up on anybody. But what are some things that you would like to say, we need to, this could be a good change? Or, you know, tell me, you know, you, again, you're living through it. I see it from where I see it, and I'm going to try to get, get down and visit you all as much as possible. But what are some things you'd like to see me do? Yes, Christine. I'll, I'll be the big bad wolf. Okay. I think spring break is definitely a necessity. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm telling you, I'm very intelligent, but I need a break. <laughs> yeah. okay. I need a break. And I know that there are some, especially some teachers and students, we get a little restless around the end of the year. We're taken care of in the fall and the winter with, with winter break, but we get toward the, the finish line. We can see it, but we start to putter out. And even if it's just a weekend or so, I know most schools do have a break, and I know it's a problem with past years, but maybe if we could just crack open the case files, see what it would take to bring it back, or if it's a good idea or not. I just know there's a lot of people in the district who are like, bring it back. Okay. So. Um, the concern I, I, uh, from the previous uh, Mr. Dr. Gorman was like the hot days in June. So hot days in June, April days of school that you don't need air conditioning. So, students, what do you feel about that then? The well, trade off? Well, we are starting school actually um, early this year um, on the 3rd. So, I know that it could probably give room. You know, I mean, we've gone to school till almost the end of June. I'm, I really don't think, you know, spring break adding on those two days is really going to make a difference, especially because we're going back, you know, so early. And they've already taken away so many you know, days off for us that I really don't see why we wouldn't be able to have a spring break. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you know I am looking at that. Thank you. Okay. And I'm glad that you brought that up. Anything else that you want the, the big guy to know? Well, as corny okay. as it may seem, the school lunches here are actually horrible. What do we need to do to improve it? That's what I, we have to When I was in eighth grade, um, I actually helped a science teacher start a garden at the middle school mm -hmm. and I don't know if he's actually continued on that or whatever but I think it would be really helpful if we did things like that and I'm sure students would get involved with helping with that because I mean I would love to see like fresh food you know in there too but right now I don't think I don't think that's happening but I mean like gardens and stuff and you know students helping out with that and even students helping out in the lunchroom you know making could add on to like the baking classes because I took I took baking as well and I would have liked to have been more hands-on with the school stuff, like making things that students can actually eat, because mm -hmm. that's something that I'm also interested in, too. All right, good point. I'm glad, that, I'm glad where you went with that, then. I like solutions, <laughs> and you have a solution, so I like that. Um, yes. Um, with the school hours, sometimes in middle school, when you, like, 
this was my first year in middle school last year, and I woke up thinking, okay, I'm going to get up every morning at 5 a.m. I'm going to go to school and be all ready. And then by December, I was out. I was like, no, why is this happening? So I just wanted to know why the hours are so early in schools. And even when you get to high school, it's even earlier. So I was, I was kind of like, well, this is what I'm going to have to put up with for pretty much the rest of my whole entire school years. What's the end of the day look like for you then? Well, once you get past like noon and everybody's just kind of taking a break and stuff, everything is kind of like, let me just go home right now because that's when everybody's just done with school and everybody wants to go home. So I think even with elementary school, those hours were like the best for me because it was nine to three and then you got home at four. I'll look into that. And that's been talked about at Pemberton at school, at, at the start of the school day. And then the issue is at the high school level because of the sports and whatnot. I, I'm going to tell you the reason why I wasn't here, but it makes those teams start later than other high schools and then they have to start later, whatever. But I think that's the, the stumbling block with that. Especially so, and then in the buses. fall. Yeah. In the fall, we're playing field hockey and tennis in the dark. That would not be cool. You can't see where the balls no, are going. But it's, <laughs> it's a good point to make. It's a good point to make because we want you to be you know, Sprite, we want you to be up and learning, so it's a good point, Joanna. I'm going to pick on Dakota. <laughs> Dakota, give me some input. Um, I just think it's kind of weird that the um, high school has, like, more sports teams in the middle school, like um, baseball. They don't have a baseball team, but when you get to high school, how are they going to know your skill set, like, fully without a tryout and stuff like that? Okay. So uh, the sports that you have now, do you participate in sports in the middle school right now? Oh, uh, yeah, I play soccer. Play soccer in the fall? And in the springtime? There's nothing. There's nothing? Okay. And John? Um, I'd have to say the same about the school day. It would be nice to have it start later, but at the same time, having sports, our sports need time to practice. Mm -hmm. So that would okay. kind of be bad. Okay. Okay, good. And then I haven't heard from Brent. I know Brent's going off to Lafayette, and uh, so he's going through the whole gamut of Pemberton education. Uh, Brent, what do you, what's your feedback? Th this may apply to only some students, I, I guess, but um, I know that the high school is in the process of adding more AP classes to the curriculum and broadening the perspective of students being able to take different AP classes. I know a few years ago, we didn't have the number of AP classes that we do now. Um, I know it's, I understand that's still broadening, but some classes are not available to be taken due to lack of participation, meaning that kids don't sign up for the classes and that class would then be cut because there's not enough students that are able to be in the class to be taught. So I was thinking that maybe if we could advertise maybe the AP classes a little bit more, try and get a little bit more interest with that within them. How many AP classes did you participate in while you were in Pemberton schools? Um, while I was in the high school, I took AP US 2 my junior year, and I took 3 my senior year, which I totally regret doing, but <laughs> um, it was AP Calculus, uh, AP Chemistry, and AP Literature and Composition. Why do you regret it? It was very grueling. Um, with the amount of after school activities that I had along with the AP classes that I had my senior year, it was very difficult to manage my time. Um, I mean, at first it was a lot of fun trying to juggle everything at once, but then as time continued, it really took a toll on me. And that leads me to like planning, because I'm going to give you my answer with that participation. It begins in middle school. So the high school, like, you know, Gabby and Natalie and Brent and Christine, what about the middle school kids here? What do you think we should let them know right now about what they're doing? They're, they're matriculating through our schools. And, and you, what you know now, but you didn't know then. Any advice to the middle school kids? You know, one thing I actually did when I was in middle school and I had the um, privilege to be involved in was AVID and I'm still in it now um, in high school. And before AVID, when I was in um, like fifth and sixth grade, I was probably a CED student close to failing and 
um, I got recommended for AVID, and when I got into AVID, it made me want to try so much harder, and I became, you know, an AB student and then to a straight A student, wow, and now in the high school, I'm taking all honors classes, and I'm very involved, and AVID was really help for, helpful for me, and if, and if you cannot get into AVID, you know, in the middle school, m my advice to you is to, um, you know, stay focused in school, and, um, stay organized because that's one thing that they teach you in AVID and it's really helpful. You know, keep binders, keep agenda books, keep keep on top of things that, you know, that, that will help you. Very good, Gabby. I hope they're listening to you mm -hmm. on that. I I'm agree with, ahead. The, um, with AVID, but if you can't get into AVID, I would definitely take honor classes. Yes, Christine. One thing I would have to say is do not be afraid to ask for help. You have so many kids who, because if you're in the middle school slump and you're just shy and you're going to head down the entire time, then stay after class and ask for help. Be it this curriculum, be it anything, you know, that's the one thing I have to say about the staff. I can only speak for the high school, but I'm sure it's the same case in all of our schools because it's just the way these, it's the way the staff is, you know, I'm, you can go to them for anything. I've made so many friends staff wise like they yes there are teachers but they're also our friends and they really do care oh, thank you, you for know? letting me know that it's I'm, I'm sure they'll appreciate that comment too yeah all right i have a list of some things and so but that's my job we're here for you and uh so what i'm, what I'm looking i'm thinking i'm thinking out loud with you now we're looking at doing this at least once a month and then seeing all the positive things that go on in our school but also to meet with a group again later on in the school year to continue to look where we're at. So this is a, a guidepost or a benchmark of where we're at. It's not the be all end all, but I do have a good representation of middle school and high school students. And we'll look at the, the spring break. We'll look at lunches. We'll look at the AVID program for middle school kids to let them know about the supports that are necessary for them. Uh, I'll look at the hours and our starting hours. Um, the AP classes, I, I think, I don't want, I don't like to answer your question, but I think that that begins in middle school and let them know that if you want more kids to take it, they have to take certain courses so they're ready to take it in sophomore or junior year. So that's, that's a good point that you're making to have that capacity so kids can have that choice to take courses that they want to uh, partake in. And, and all, all I can say is thank you. And my door is always open. Uh, my email is obviously on the website. So if there's something that you need from me, let me know. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And before we were taping, I said, I'm a teacher. I'm a superintendent, but I'm a teacher. And so just think of me as that. And again, our main purpose is to educate you and make sure you have a, a, a good experience or a great experience, but also in closing, a good outcomes. So you're going to Lafayette, Rutgers, or you're going to go into a, a career. Because it's not, it's not for everybody, but we prepare you for that. And we need your input. So uh, again, thank you, and I look forward to seeing you in the hallways in the uh, in the spring time, in the in the fall, and then throughout to the spring. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.